Katherine Johnson was a human computer, literally. She possessed a tremendous mathematical capability and ability to work with space trajectories with very little technology and even less recognition in the earliest days of space research and exploration. She is the mathematician and physicist whose calculations of orbital mechanics as both a NASA employee and one of the company that preceded it were critical to the success of the first and subsequent U.S. crew space flights. Katherine Johnson was born in West Virginia in 1918, the youngest of four children. It was apparent early in her life that she had strong mathematical abilities, as well as just being an overall, well, genius. She completed the eighth grade by the age of 10, which was a problem at the time because her town did not provide education for African Americans beyond the eighth grade. Undeterred, her father, Joshua, drove her and the entire family 120 miles to Institute, West Virginia, where they would live while she attended high school. Johnson would go on to finish high school at age 14, then enroll in college at West Virginia State College, now known as West Virginia State University. She was mentored by several professors there and took every math course the college offered, every single one. She was so brilliant that new mathematics classes were added just for her. She would go on to graduate from college summa cum laude in 1937 with two degrees, one in mathematics, obviously, the other in French, at age 18. As an aside, albeit an important one, Johnson was chosen as one of three African Americans and the only woman to integrate and attend the graduate school at West Virginia University at Morgantown, West Virginia, after a 1938 United States Supreme Court ruling, Johnson would go on to pursue a career as a research mathematician, which was historically a difficult field for African Americans and women to enter. Johnson, undeterred, got to work, and work she did. In 1952, Johnson learned that the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA, was hiring African American computers, or people who performed and checked calculations for technological developments. She applied, was accepted the following year. Johnson not only proved adept at her calculations, she displayed a curiosity and assertiveness that caught her superiors by surprise. The women did what they were told to do, she recalled. They didn't ask questions or take the task any further. I asked questions. I wanted to know why. Johnson's superior knowledge, skill set, and confidence in her work carried her to the highest levels of importance in NACA and then NASA, although behind the scenes and anonymous to most, as was the norm during that time. Those closest to the decision makers knew well of her importance though. She was eventually chosen to work with an all-male flight research team, helped calculate the orbit of the 1969 Apollo 11 flight to the moon, and co-authored 26 scientific papers that NASA still links to via its archives. Her determination, assertiveness and willingness to pursue her career in the face of adversity and then transform it in meaningful and lasting ways is to be admired, recognized, and commended. Hollywood and even the White House agreed. In 2015, sitting President Barack Obama awarded Johnson the Presidential Medal of Freedom for her pioneering work that led black women to work in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, what we most often refer to as STEM. In 2016, the major motion picture, Hidden Figures, telling the story of Johnson and two other African-American women mathematicians, Mary Jackson and Dorothy Vaughn, was released with high marks from both film critics and moviegoers alike. Katherine Johnson herself even gave it a stamp of approval, saying, it was well done. The three leading ladies did an excellent job portraying us.